The following is a GoPowerCat.com production. Coach Prime is doing his thing out there in Colorado. You know, some people don't like it. Some people love it. The one thing that he's going to do is get eyeballs. I think the next step, though, for Colorado is can he get them to respectability? We're talking Colorado football today. This is the Big 12 Insiders. Welcome to the Big 12 Insiders, your Big 12 sports show, presented by Synergy Financial Partners. Now let's go to booming North Texas, home of Studio 73. Here's your host, Brian Henley. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Big 12 Insiders. This is your man, Big B, Brian Hanley, along with Adam Munster-Tiger, who's covering Colorado for 24-7. Adam, how is it going today? It's going great. Uh, yeah, the now seven spring practices in, and we've definitely seen the competition level rise as opposed to a year ago when Coach Prime and his staff had basically just gotten here and they were uh, not liking what they were seeing out there last spring. Right. I can imagine. So, and that was going to be my first thing, you know, is spring practices here. Um, and I got to believe that last year it was more, you know what, we got to find out who can be here. Who's, who's capable of, of doing what we're asking them to do. Do they deserve, not necessarily deserve, but are they going to be able to play on such a, a big stage power five level? And it found out that there wasn't a lot of guys that that, that they wanted. I, I shouldn't say that couldn't play, but a lot of guys that just the staff just decided, you know what, we need to move on from. This year, I got to believe it's a lot different. The evaluation process is, has got to be different because I believe this year it's more of, you know what, now it's competition. Let's find out who's going to actually be on the field. Am I wrong with that? No, you're right. And, and you look at it, they have one scholarship player that is still around from the team that played in 2022 under Carl Durrell. So you're basically having uh, to flip over your entire roster. And I think there, there's, like you said, there's a lot of eyeballs on Colorado. Now there weren't a lot of eyeballs on Colorado back in 2022. I don't right. think some people understand just how bad they were that season. Uh, they did pull off a, a miracle uh, after there was a coaching change and Mike Sanford was their interim coach and got them fired up for one Saturday. But most of those games in 2022, the other team was pretty much naming their score against them. It, it was uh, historically bad when you look at the, the scoring margin, which was dead last out of 131 FBS programs this year. So in first spring last year, yeah, it was evaluating guys and it was – I wouldn't say scrambling, but it was having to add guys to the portal that maybe some of them were a little bit higher risks. Right. This off season, the guys that they brought in through the portal for the vast majority of them have starting experience and many of them at the power four levels. So you're seeing another upgrade. Uh, they've got 25 transfer additions. It's still tough. You know, you're putting all these new pieces together. Still, you've got new coordinators on both sides of the ball. So there's definitely a lot of question marks with this, but just having seen the roster, what it looked like in 2022 and now seeing what it looks like going into year two of the coach prime era, it's pretty remarkable. Uh, the, the, you know, the, the improvements that they've made pretty much at most positions. Right. Well, and that was going to be my next question for you, Adam, you know, just kind of looking for obviously from the outside, looking in, you know, people see Coach Prime and they see Flash. They see he's out in front of stuff. He talks a lot. But I don't think people understand the, the, the coaching aspect of what's actually going in. I know there's a lot of detractors out there that say, you know, he's not doing this and, you know, he's not great at X's and O's. But do you know how many coaches out there at the Power Four level that aren't great X and O coaches that are more CEO types? Uh, and I'm not even saying that's what he is, but that's just some people's perception of him. But kind of give us the overall background of what, or the health, I should say, of what the program is right now. Because, like I said, it, it started off last year like a house of fire, and then it didn't end well. So, you know, with with just the way that they played. Now, there were a lot of games that were a lot closer, you know, and losing one-score games. Now, some games got away from them. I think everybody understands that. But just taking a look, not necessarily from last spring, but from the end of the year to now, what does the overall health or what does the program look like? Yeah, well, a lot of that is going to be 
how good is this revamped offensive line? Because anybody that tuned into a Colorado football game last year uh, right. saw that eyesore that was uh, the, the Colorado offensive line. And I, I, not to beat a dead horse. I mean, they've already taken enough flack, but Shador Sanders was running for his life most of the season. Uh, and so I mentioned that a lot of these transfers they brought in now are guys that have a uh, power four starting experience. And so they brought in some offensive linemen uh, that they're, scouting department says these are NFL type prospects. Now uh, they got to go out there and back that up. Sure. Uh, it, it is an offensive line group, a new group that has a totally different mentality. Last year's group actually wasn't horrible in the season opener, but uh, once other teams kind of exploited some of the, the weaknesses at, at the guard positions, um, the confidence of Colorado's offensive line group unraveled pretty quickly last year. This new group of offensive linemen has a, a completely different swagger, and you're seeing fights now breaking out at practice on a regular basis because um, their motto is don't touch two. That, that's why they came to the University of Colorado, and there's no offensive line group in the country that's going to be uh, in the spotlight more than they are, right? So right. it's an opportunity for um, you know a Tyler Johnson transfer over from Houston to uh, really get a, a lot of eyeballs on him. And so it's going to – be based pretty largely on, on how well that group plays. Now, defensively, they, they've got a couple gaps at linebacker that they need to fill during the spring transfer window. Um, and, and they bring in uh, a first-time defensive coordinator. Robert Livingston was with the Cincinnati Bengals before as their safeties coach. So this is going to be his first time calling the defense. So there, there's question marks sprinkled throughout here, but then you just keep going back to the talent has been upgraded so much. Um, in You've got to assume that Coach Prime is going to learn from some maybe some of the, the clock management issues they had at times last year. Sure. He's still relatively young as, as, as a college head coach, right? Yep. Uh, it was his first time at the Power Four level. And uh, he's, he strikes me as somebody that, that learns from, you know, mistakes in, in that regard. So, you know, you, you were talking a little bit about the roster being rebuilt, obviously the offensive line. Um Colorado has been a, a program here recently under Coach Prime that has just jumped all into the, the the portal. I guess two things is a totally rebuilt roster from what it was a year ago, uh, even so from the end of last year. But I guess one question that a lot of people have is, what is he doing with high school recruiting? Is that going to start becoming a bigger thing at Colorado? Because you know, I, I'm just not sure that it's sustainable that you can go every year and constantly get 25 guys out of the portal and make this thing work. So it, the question is, are they starting to, to dive into high school recruiting anymore? Or is he saying, no, I think I can make it work the portal way. And that's the way that we're going to do it. It's interesting. They've actually added a few high school additions here recently, guys that are really under the radar that Coach Prime uh, wants to basically give them a shot. He's, you know, he loves recruiting the state of Florida. But yeah, they're still only at 10 in terms of 2024 high school additions. And uh, I was told that number could come up a little bit closer to 15 with this upcoming 2025 class, but I'm told it might not even get to 15. So they're going to continue to keep this strategy. I, I would say, it will work if you, if you start winning football games, right? Correct. Because you're all of a sudden going to become uh, attractive to even more guys in the portal. Right. Uh, like Shador Sanders, his eligibility, he's going, he's going off to the NFL after this year. If Colorado wins eight games this year, all of a sudden it's a very attractive destination uh, for a, a transfer quarterback. So I, I think as long as you have success on the field, you can, you can kind of build it this way. I mean, it's trending that way for a lot of programs right now, just because of, Sure. Uh, you know, how much freedom these players have nowadays. But the one challenge will be for Colorado is, is an NIL collective standpoint. That's something that they've, they're trying to get better. They, they were kind of late to the NIL game and as much, you know, interest as coach prime brings up, they just don't have the donor base to com compete with the who's who for, for a lot of these players. So uh, I, I think it's sustainable as long as you, you start to creep that high school number up a little bit closer to, to that 15 number. Right. So, and, and yeah, I would say the same thing. You got to have some high school, you know, input, because again, you want to be a program that's going to try to develop guys, you know, and, and the more that you develop, the better off you can be. But I think you're 100% right, Adam, winning games kind of cures all of this stuff, because whatever your philosophy is, if you win, then it works. If you don't, 
then it doesn't work. I think that kind of speaks for itself. Just uh, now you mentioned the NIL and collectives and the donor base. I would assume that everybody in administration, and again, this is just an assumption, and in the town itself, that they are still really high on this football program. After everything that happened last year, the influx of, uh, of just popularity, the influx of money, I would think everybody's still really happy with what's going on. Want to win more games, but again, they won one. Now they win four. You know, in, in an uptick again, if they could win eight, that would be even more. But I got to believe everybody around town, there's still kind of a buzz around the football program right now. Yeah, it's fun to be a Colorado football fan right now. And if you were a Buff fan back in 2022, you might not even want to wear your apparel out to the grocery store. That's how bad it had gotten. And now you go anywhere and you, and you see Colorado gear all over the place. So it, it's kind of crazy. Uh, it, it, Coach Prime is very polarizing, but many, many, many people love him. And, and so that's brought a lot of excitement. Uh, Little Wayne is coming out to do a concert right after their spring game this year. Um, I don't know if it's going to get sold out like it was last year, but uh, it's going to be close to a packed house, I would imagine. So right. that part of it has changed a lot in, in the last couple of years. There is some apprehension of like, how long is this going to last, right? Because mm -hmm. uh, Mel Tucker left Colorado in the middle of the night to take the Michigan state job. And so there's some of that PTSD from, from going through that experience sure. as Colorado fans. Uh, so that, that maybe is one part of it, but um, he, there's no question that he's brought more talent to Boulder. Uh, and, and, you know, Travis Hunter is one of the, the top athletes in the country. Uh, Colorado doesn't get guys like that. Right. You know? And so coach prime has brought the ability, uh, the eyeballs and uh, it goes beyond the hype too. You know, I, I think a lot of mm -hmm. people have bought into the the messages that he has with this team. He's, it, it's a lot of tough love, you know, um, he brings guys in that are talented, but he's not going to coddle them. You know, he's very cognizant of also, uh, you know, a lot of coaches say this, but you see it every day on social media from coach Brian yes. in terms of uh, really uh, trying to improve these kids off the field as well. And so all of that, it, it's been a feel good situation around here, but yeah, four and eight, obviously he's not going to cut it in year two. Right. Well, and I'm glad you said that too, Adam, as far as, you know, what he's doing off the field and trying to, to make kids into men. He's trying to change them into men because, look, some people are, are, are going to, they're not going to like what he does no matter what he does. Me personally, I look at it from the outside looking in and just say, hey, yeah, he records a lot of stuff, puts stuff out there, but it's teaching these guys something. You can say it, he's just doing it for the camera. But there's a lot of different things that you can do from, you know, just to put on camera at him other than, hey, clean up the locker room, keep the bathrooms clean, go to class, do what you're supposed to do. There's a lot of different things that he could be doing. And he does a lot of those different things, but he also does this. And I think people have to understand that, that look, Dion is doing this to try to help. Yeah, he wants everybody to get into the NFL if possible, but he continuously says, 85% of you aren't going to make it to the NFL. You got to do something else. You got to become better men. I love that that aspect, and I don't think that gets talked enough about Adam as far as how he's trying to transform these young men into men. Yeah, and anytime somebody questions his motives, it's like, he doesn't have to coach football. Like he Correct. does not need that. He's a Hall of Famer. He played in yes. the World Series. <laughs> you know, yes. this is a yes, obviously, uh, you know, he's coaching his son, so there's that incentive there. But uh, you know, that that's been a lot of the thought is that oh, well, as soon as you know Shadur and Shiloh are gone, then he's gone. But uh, it it seems like it's beyond that. Like he almost kind of adopts a Jordan Seaton into the family and, and becomes you know. A, because he understands what it's like to be that guy. Right. And not a lot of head coaches do. Not a lot of them were in those shoes of being, you know, looked at as a, as a prime NFL prospect. Yeah. And I think that's where he's got the, the unique status. And I think that's why he garners so much respect from kids is because their parents remember him and remember how good he was. Take all the flash and all that stuff away. He was still, now I think that's what made him that, that and what makes him who he is. But at the same time, he was really good. And, and and you just turn on the film and you can watch it. Even if you didn't see him play, you can just turn on the film and see how good Dion was. And I think that's why a lot of kids and, and a lot of parents trust him 
you know, from what they see is, okay, you know what? I can send my son here and he's going to make sure that they're doing the right things, which a lot of parents, I mean, that's a worry. It's like, hey, I've done this. I got to send my son somewhere. I need you to take care of him. I need you to make sure he's acting right. And I believe that dion has got that trust because they do that. They they do they do the right things in Colorado. A lot of kids aren't out there getting in trouble, doing stupid stuff. He holds them accountable, and he shows that he's holding, holding them accountable. That's what I really, really like about that. So we're going to park a quick break here. On the other side, we're going to talk about upcoming season, what the schedule looks like, and what we might be expecting here in the near future from Colorado football program. One word from our sponsor, Synergy Financial Partners. At Synergy Financial Partners, the mission is to change the way Americans plan for their financial future. Synergy doesn't just offer you a financial plan. At Synergy, the goal is to help you find your best financial future. Learn more at SynergyFinancial.com. Welcome back to the show. Let's head back to the studio. All right, everybody. Welcome back to Big 12 Insiders. Um, so Adam, let's take a look here. You know, I was looking at Colorado's schedule. Let's take a look at what's coming up here. You know, they got North Dakota state, which we all know is a, a, a huge, just a, a powerhouse in the FCS market. So they are, they're taking on a, that's not a cupcake game. That's not a, a gimme game. And then they play color or Nebraska. And then at Colorado state, both of those games on the road, you know, the non-conference schedule for Colorado this year, you know, just like last year, not easy, just not easy to, to come right out of the gate there. Yeah, it, it's kind of a sneaky, tough non-conference schedule. You know, there's uh, an opportunity, depending on how they look in that opening game, That you know, there's a chance they're going to be, uh, you know, favored at least two of the three non-conference right. games. But uh, you know, Nebraska, it's hard to say how, the, how they're going to look coming out the gates. Uh, but yeah, North Dakota State, at least because they have knocked off so many FBS programs, like right. you know that Coach Prime and his staff have a little bit more to, to kind of get the guy's attention leading up to that game. But Colorado has traditionally scheduled very difficult. And, you know, there's been some years here um, where they go five and seven and you go, man, they, they could have kind of scheduled a, a little bit easier to get in, in more right. into more bowl, bowl games. But um, no, that, that should be a fun matchup though, to, to kick off the season. Yeah, absolutely. I, I like, look, if they're going to win, if they're going to be the kind of team that I think that a lot of people expect them to be, uh, want them to be, then, Hey, you go win these types of games and it doesn't matter who you play. You got to be good. And then, you know, I'm looking at their conference schedule, you know, to start off, they are at home to Baylor, at UCF, and then home to Kansas State and at Arizona. I mean, you might think, okay, Baylor wasn't very good last year, but this is kind of a make-or-break season for, for Dave Aranda at Baylor. And then UCF got better. Uh, Kansas State is Kansas State. Arizona was a surprise team last year, but they were very good. Even though they got a new coach, I mean, they were still very good. They bring back their quarterback. Again, you go down the list. Cincinnati kind of struggled. I'm not sure how good they're going to be next year. Uh, Texas Tech on the road, always tough. Utah, we know what Utah. I mean, they're probably the favorites along with Kansas. It's going to be tough. And then the last Oklahoma State, who was in the Big 12 title game a year ago, to get the eight wins, they're going to have to play some really good football. They are. It's – interesting you know when you get the schedule a lot of people like to go down win loss win loss and with this there's so many coin flip type games and not knowing exactly uh you know which teams are going to kind of live up to the hype because uh, we talked about this on a previous show this is one of those conferences the big 12 going into 2024 where you've got the vast majority of fan bases in that optimistic lens thinking Absolutely. that, you know, they, they've got the pieces and right now we're talking spring. It's always uh, when hope springs eternal, but uh, it's, it comes down to, again, how well does Colorado's offensive line play? Cause we already know that Shador Sanders is one of the most accurate quarterbacks in the country. We already know Travis Hunter's one of the most dynamic weapons on both sides of the ball. So it comes down to that. And all of a sudden now you look at some games that, maybe seem like they're going to be tougher now all of a sudden look more winnable. Uh, but it's, it's just hard to predict 
Um, and, and I just have a, a feeling this is going to be a conference that cannibalizes itself this year. That's just yeah. going to really feature a lot of parody. Uh, and I, it, it should create a lot of exciting football though. Yeah, it will. Um, and, but I think you're right. I don't think there's going to be a dominant team. Now there could be, don't get me wrong, but I don't think there's going to be a team that just runs the table in this conference. Uh, and I think for, because of the brands that are in the conference, I think that's a good thing. I don't think you have, you need to have a team every year, uh, that that's just dominating the conference. And even when OU and Texas, I mean, the last four years, they didn't just dominate them, especially Texas, neither of them dominated the conference. So I think it's a good thing. I think the strength of the Big 12 is going to be the strength in numbers is that, hey, we got four or five teams that are really good football teams, maybe not the national brand that everybody knows, but re still really good football teams. Uh, digging in a little bit, you mentioned Travis Hunter. Played a ton of snaps last year when he was healthy. Is there any word that maybe they're going to temper that down and maybe possibly play him more on defense than offense, slow that down a little bit, or are they still just guns blazing and he's going to play as many snaps as possible on both sides of the ball? Yeah, it doesn't seem like there's any chance of them changing that plan. And part of that is that Travis Hunter is just one of those young men that just never seems to get tired when right. – they're doing their conditioning drills and really pushing them. And, um, you know, certain guys are trying to find the trash can. Travis right. Hunter's sitting there smiling and dancing for the camera. You know, he just <laughs> has unlimited energy. Now you talk about the, the risk factor. Well, he got hurt on a, a cheap shot last year along the Correct. sideline. And I, I don't know if limiting his exposure is, is necessarily going to, uh, you need him out there for, for as many reps as you can possibly get. And I still don't think we've seen the best of Travis Hunter. Uh, there are plays that he makes in practice that are just incredible. And I think that um, if he can stay healthy, that um, he's going to take his game to an even higher level. Um, and then the question becomes, what side of the ball does he project on for the NFL? But uh, in terms of his, his time at Colorado, th this upcoming season, they, they're, they're planning to have him be a full-time guy both ways. Gotcha. Now, with April 15th, look, you mentioned at the beginning that Colorado were seven practices in. Uh, a lot of schools, Adam, have changed their, their actual, their spring practice around this transfer portal opening date of April 15th. You know, a lot of schools have said, you know what, the portal is going to be huge. And this, this date has come around that everybody's talking about, but hey, we're going to be in the middle of practice. And I don't see there being a whole lot of guys that are just going to be jumping into the portal in the middle of practice. With number one, was that planned by Colorado? Number two, are they going to be going out there at, at on the 15th and looking to add even more talent? I got to believe it, the second half that they're going to do that. Yeah, yeah, it's not ideal to your point. Uh, initially, they had come out and said the – window was going to be beginning in May 1st. And so right. uh, I think maybe a lot of coaching staffs then kind of reshuffled the things around after that, that was changed. Uh, Colorado decided not to. Um, so there, there's definitely going to be having a, to multitask quite a bit those days once the portal opens up. And yeah, as long as coach prime is in Boulder, the Buffaloes are going to be very active in the transfer portal. Uh, they need to add at least one, maybe two linebackers and uh, you know, probably another offensive tackle or maybe even an interior guy. I don't think uh, knowing just how important this season is for, for Shadur Sanders in Colorado to maximize his last year of eligibility. Uh, you got to create as much competition on that offensive line. They've done a good job by bringing in eight guys so far, uh, but then they also lost some guys that were, you know, up to snuff and improved that last year. And so uh, numbers wise, they're only at 11 scholarship offensive linemen right now. So that, that's going to be another need as well. And then they bring in some guys that uh, have already committed, like Will Shepard, who uh, was Vanderbilt's leading receiver last year. He's uh, doing the smart thing and staying at Vanderbilt to get that degree before he leaves. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, so they, they've got some other pieces that are coming in. I would venture to guess that we see quite a few guys transfer out of Colorado's program as well. They do have some open scholarships right now, but I think there are guys that just don't see a whole lot of playing time at Colorado because they have improved the roster through the portal. And so um, it's going to be kind of uh, this revolving door, but you, you want it to slow down obviously a bit because uh, what, what 
they did last year in terms of a roster overhaul just makes it so difficult to get all those pieces on the same page. So um, a lot more returning guys, but you're still going to see kind of that, that other side of, of the roster changeover uh, once spring ball. Well, I guess before spring ball even ends last year, they had the same issue. They had a bunch of defense alignment that hit the portal before their spring game. It was televised nationally on ESPN and they just didn't have enough defense alignment to really do a good scrimmage. So um, right. Uh, we'll, we'll see what that looks like. I, I wouldn't envision though that they're going to get uh, have one position that quite as weak as defensive line got last year during the spring window. Right. So that'll definitely help. I, I think, like I said, they do just about or they do a good job just about like anybody or almost better than everybody as far as the portal uh, identifying the talent. Look, there was a lot going on last year trying to identify the roster, who could be here, who who shouldn't be here, who do we not want to be here, and who doesn't want to be there. That's all that came into to play last year. Stable ground, I think this is kind of a, a big measuring stick this year because, like I said, things have settled. Now it's, okay, what do we got? Here's what we are. This is what we need to do well. Let's go out, improve, and go win some football games. I think at that point, that's where Colorado is. I personally, I want to see Colorado get back to what Colorado was. I grew up with Colorado being extremely good. I mean, you know, in the Bill McCartney era, I mean, they were national power. Everybody knew Colorado's name. Personally, I think college football is better when Colorado is good. We need more teams west of the Mississippi, but above the Mason-Dixon line that are good in college football, in my opinion. Colorado was one of those teams. I think the quicker they can get back there, look, I like what Dion's doing. I do. I'm I'm one of the guys that actually like what he's doing. I don't mind. If it turns out and it doesn't work, it doesn't work. I think it will. But this year is going to tell us everything that we need to know because, look, you've got your guys in. You're They're kind of a veteran team. Uh, and you can do that with the portal. You can, you can be older with the portal. And when I say older, everybody's not, but when you have a veteran quarterback and receivers and offensive line, I think that's kind of a good start. Last question before I get you out of here, Adam, the defense got a new coordinator. The defense gave up a lot last year. Like you said, defensive line just wasn't up to snuff, just didn't have a whole lot. In my opinion, not a lot of talent on the defensive side of the ball. There were some, obviously Travis Hunter, Shiloh Sanders, there were some talented guys, but not enough to be competitive. Has that changed so far? There's definitely a lot more competitiveness, especially when you look at the front seven. Uh, that's one of the areas that they really attack the portal pretty hard. Again, there's still a little bit kind of question marks in terms of the depth at linebacker, but mm-hmm. uh, they, they brought in some big boys that were playing in the SEC at Alabama. Uh, Torin Carter comes in from, from Arkansas and uh, Quincy Wiggins uh, from LSU was the top-ranked high school recruit coming out of Louisiana a couple of years ago. And so the guys really looked the part. Um, and, and, again, we've seen a, a lot of fights break out in practice, and it's because there is this increased competitiveness between the defensive line uh, and the offensive line. And you bring in Samuel Okunlola from Pittsburgh as an edge guy. They're going to bring in B.J. Green, who was Arizona State's best pass rusher uh, once the spring semester ends. So they've definitely upgraded. Again, it, it's – Last year it was like Amari McNeil. He he proved to be pretty good, but a lot of the guys they brought in on the front seven just didn't pan out. And so right. this year there was more of an emphasis on we got to get more proven guys that have started games at other schools and, and not take as many flyers through the portal. Gotcha. Makes a lot of sense. Well, Adam, we're going to park one other break, but uh, we appreciate you taking the time and coming to speak to us about Colorado. Uh, you've been great all the times that you've been on. We will keep bringing you back as many times as you want to come back. So we appreciate you and thank you. Yeah, I appreciate you. Always fun. Thank you. No problem. One last word and we will be right back on the other side. Again, a word from our sponsor, Synergy Financial, and we'll come back and end the show. At Synergy Financial Partners, the vision is to build the world's largest consumer financial education and empowerment company. Synergy doesn't just offer you a financial plan. At Synergy The goal is to help you find your best financial future. Learn more at SynergyFinancial.com. Welcome back to the show. Let's head back to the studio. You know, you can love Coach Prime. You can hate Coach Prime. But, you know, he's going to be who he is. And right now, I think the people of Colorado are liking what they see. Look, I get it. 
there was a lot of hype last year, and it didn't turn out to be great. There was a ton of hype. They won four games. But look, if you win one the year before, winning four is an improvement. Regardless of what people try to say and downplay it, it was an improvement. You don't have to like his methods. You don't have to agree with his methods. But he's not putting kids in harm's way. That's number one. He's teaching lessons. That's number two. And they're getting better. Having said all of that, this is a make or break year in my opinion. Look, you got to get something done. You can't come out and win four games again. It's one thing to talk all the hype and do all that. that all that's fine. And it doesn't bother most people. People are okay with you being brash. There's some people that don't like it, but it is what it is. But if you are going to be brash, you got to start to back that up. That was the one thing that Dion always did when he was playing. He always backed it up, and now his team's got to have his back and do the same thing. We appreciate everybody being out here or coming out today and joining us. Thank you, guys. Fitz is going to be covering us the next two days. I'll be out of town, so I appreciate all the support. Remember, like. Follow, subscribe. We're almost getting to, or we're almost at our goal. So continue to push and subscribe over on YouTube at the Big 12 Insiders on YouTube. We appreciate you guys, and we will talk to you later. This has been a GoPowerCat.com and Spirit Street production. Please support this show by subscribing to this YouTube channel or follow us on your favorite podcast platform.